Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing an overview of my first trimester of pregnancy. I have this notebook zip personal size Kate Spade planner that I've been keeping track of my pregnancy. And the planner itself pages, that is an actual pregnancy milestone, the pregnancy journal is what it's called from the Recollections co Collection and you get it at Michael's. Of course, wait for those coupons. There's a coupon for Michael's every single day. There really is. So never buy things full price, you know, always search for the deals or just wait because this Recollections Collection is the permanent line. So I've been seeing the pregnancy journal since before I was pregnant. I actually bought the pregnancy journal before we were even trying <laughs> and we as you saw in the video we tried once and we got pregnant so it's pretty we're pretty blessed I am out of breath that's probably the first thing that comes to mind for the first trimester especially I keep wanting to say semester school and then I'll be going through my pages so just to make sure that I'm not missing anything to recap you of my personal pregnancy. Of course, everyone's is different, maybe different, maybe a couple similarities. And I love to see and hear if you typed your comments down below of how your pregnancy went, what helped you, what you absolutely had to avoid because there's been a lot of those for myself and just anything that really helped that could help out others. So my first trimester here, week four and five, I have them combined. I guess I just didn't believe I was pregnant at the time or just didn't have much symptoms. But the first thing was I couldn't sleep much. Lots of congestion. Oh, I remember that. I was just congested all the time. You know, you think that you're catching a summer flu or a flu and depending on the season that you get pregnant, it's not always gonna be the summer. And then I went to the doctor and of course, they confirm that you're pregnant. I had a dry cough. I actually still have this dry cough today. And I'm in my second trimester at the moment when I'm filming this. And it went away. I do remember that. But it has come back. It's almost like a tickle in my throat that just does not want to go away. And I had lots of phlegm. Of course, congestion comes phlegm. That was not the best thing. Week six, I was sleeping much better, I say here. And the... A version of food began hardcore. I could not smell any raw meat, any raw red meat, chicken, anything raw. I just couldn't smell it. I couldn't even look at it because it triggered the smell that I remembered. And then it made me want to gag. Literally, I didn't have to smell the food. And I could already remember how it smelled that when I looked at it or glanced at it, it was just enough to throw me wanting to go run to the toilet. My boobs began to become sore. So there's one thing, lots of sore boobs, lots of had a breath, which I still am, and constipation. Constipation obviously comes with the fact that I had a lot of food aversions. And so you are just eating what Whatever it is that your body can eat at the time, whether it be cereal, fries, pickles, blueberries, fruits, non-fruits, grains. So your body is digesting all these various types of foods because that's maybe what you could eat and that's what I could eat. So then of course, it wasn't all nutritious. Nutritious? It wasn't all nutritious. Okay. And so... The buildup, obviously, of when you digest the foods through your intestines is there and you're constipated. And I became constipated. What I could eat, I remember just eating a lot of tomatoes, grilled cheeses. At one point that I couldn't eat grilled cheeses anymore. Uh, stuff with cinnamon, I like that. Any nuts, almonds, walnuts. Then I couldn't sleep much because my boobs were hurting so much while I was sleeping that I had to go and purchase sleeping bras. I actually have purchased sleeping bras, sleeping bralettes, and nursing bras that are comfortable enough to sleep in, and those have been helping me. So I know that when it comes to time to nurse, I have those bras already, and I'm already using them to sleep in because I just cannot continue with the soreness. It wakes me up. It woke me up at night because I would get up in pain 
and so I needed support while I slept. So I got those. About week 11, I was getting my appetite back, it says here. I guess I could say that I was eating more foods that my husband would cook. So rices, wow, it's been a while since I had rice before this week came about. Because of course, I was eating lots of cereals. It felt like the cereal was the only food, overall food, I could eat. Cereal is not a meal. We all know this, but it does help some people when they're in the rush in the morning to, as a breakfast. And I have absolutely done that many times that I would grab my shake, grab some fruits in my lunchbox, in my lunchbox, in my lunch bag. And of course, all I could eat at home was cereal, quick, fast, digested, and out the door for work. About week 12, where of course it's my first pregnancy and I'm thinking, I'm at three months now. Is that now over the first trimester? It doesn't work like that. But I have here that I still had an aversion of food. So the food, it just doesn't stay any longer. It just doesn't complete my satisfaction all the time. I eat chicken and rice one, one day, like for one meal. And then the next day it's, you know, we, we make more food than what my husband and I consume so that we can have some leftovers for lunch. It's packed away in a lunch container to, for me to take the next day. I heat it up at work, I'm about to eat it, and I can't smell it. And I couldn't eat it. It's that bad. It's stuff that I used to love before. I may come to a point in a week where I can eat it, and I'm able to digest it without gagging. And the next day, it's like as if I've hated that my whole life. So now I'm stuck with eating something completely different. And yes, it's frustrating. My poor husband has been amazing, even though he's been frustrated. And it is frustrating, I can understand. But no man out there is going to ever understand what it actually feels like unless they can carry a baby themselves. Okay? Unless that man, male, partner can carry and has carried a baby in their belly for first trimester and understands the aversions of foods, the sore boobs, the constipation, the fact that you can't eat what you ate yesterday today, then I'm sorry they're never going to understand. But besides all that, my husband has still been great and he's trying and that's all I can ask of him. About week 13, we're still in first trimester. Just wanted some tomato sauce. Anything with tomato sauce was good for me. Toma what is the one that causes heartburn? Tomatoes, right? I haven't had any of that yet, which is great. And I say yet, I just don't want it. No, I don't need to get it. I'm glad that the tomatoes that I've ate, and I've ate a lot of tomatoes, any tomato sauces, because I've had pasta and tomato sauce, uh, has not caused me any heartburn. So I'm thankful for that. Now I'm a second trimester, week 14, and all I can tell you from my first trimester is that it's not peachy. It really is not. It's the best feeling to get to see your baby in the ultrasound. First, it's a little blob, and sometimes it's floating, right? If the technician actually holds it and the, babe, and the little blob baby is floating around, you'll see that. But what makes it even better is when you get to see the full head arms, legs, baby, and I got to see that in week 12 where the baby was actually floating around, it looked like a little head, baby alien floating around my belly. And my belly isn't even big, and it wasn't big at that time. I had popped and I couldn't suck in, I remember, but I couldn't wear my tight clothing anymore without someone looking at me, which I thought I thought they were looking at me and maybe wondering if I'm either getting chubby or if I'm pregnant. And of course, people around me have been so kind to not ask. So thank you to those not asking, not having asked. Now, of course, you know I'm pregnant and the whole world knows and we're so happy to share with all of you. But the first trimester was, was somewhat hard. It hasn't been one of the hardest things that I've done. I cannot say that. I haven't had the worst pregnancy. There have been other ladies that are commenting in the Facebook groups that I'm a part of how much worse they've had it. And I feel for them. I really do. 
I'm happy I didn't have any morning sickness, I didn't have any nausea. I had maybe one time I remember my first, yeah, it was my first ultrasound. You have to down a liter of water before you go to your ultrasound so that your uterus is clear. But unfortunately, I did it half an hour before we were about to head out the door and actually get to the appointment. And of course, I downed it. All that water was sitting in my stomach the entire appointment. Luckily, we were able to see the blob of the baby. But as I was getting back into the car after the appointment, coming back home, I couldn't even sit my head up. I had to rest it on the seat headrest and you know recline my seat because I just couldn't with the driving. My husband was driving. I couldn't have my head up. Whew. And I immediately got home and went straight to the toilet and all that came out was water because it was in my stomach. Mind you, I hadn't ate either, so that's not a good thing, but the fact of downing water, it was sitting in my stomach, it didn't sit well in, the stomach, in my stomach, obviously, and then it just came right back out. So in my second ultrasound, my technician did ask me to do a trick for the following ultrasound, which I will have, and that is wake up an hour and a half before I am to have the appointment obviously depending on your on the traffic that gets you get to the appointment essentially an hour an hour before your appointment is to start you need to have a liter of water in your stomach I like I asked her like how much more water can I take so that my uterus can be clearer than what it is now because I can see the baby and she said it just it would be nice to have more water in there so we can have an even clearer picture and it's not in your stomach. So in order to do that, an hour before we are to start the appointment, the ultrasound appointment, please have a liter already. You had to have finished a liter by an hour before. So that means it takes me 30 minutes to get to the ultrasound place. It's a woman's ultrasound, only women's ultrasound. So half an hour, that doesn't count. So I should not be drinking any water on the ride there. That needs to stop. And it takes me, I wanna say half an hour to get ready to go to these appointments. Cause you know, I just go wake up in the morning, do what it is that I do in the morning, bathroom, change, eat something quick and then leave. So that's another, that's an hour before the appointment. Now in order for me to start doing, getting ready, I need to have already finished a liter of water. So that means for myself, I will wake up an hour and a half before, finish a liter of water, within 30 minutes so that way I'm not just downing it you know like I'm drinking drinking having a bite to eat drinking drinking water and have a liter of water swallowed to ensure that by an hour before my appointment is to start I am finished a liter of water and luckily I have a jug that literally says a liter fill that up with water and I need to finish the entire thing an hour before my appointment my next appointment I will do that I think that's it I have for now. <laughs> First trimester was definitely something where, you know, you're kind of in your tiptoes. Even my husband wasn't really, I don't think it was like dawned on him that we were having a baby. Our second ultrasound, he stood up where the monitor is because the monitor is up and I'm laying down and he was just staring at the baby like floaty, floaty, floating around like he's in space and... It was kind of cute to see him do that because he was, I think then he actually said, okay, there's a head, there's some legs, because the technician saw, uh, pointed to the legs and the two hands, and the two arms with the hand, and yeah, my husband loved that, and so did I. <laughs> so we're so excited, I'm going to be, I don't know if I'm going to be doing weekly updates as I've posted already, because if the whole summary of a trimester works best for me to just recap, then I might just do them. Obviously first trimester there was changes every single week. Actually there was changes some days, sometimes every single day, but I captured it all into one video for the week. So I'll let you know, uh, I'm gonna play it by ear. Right now I'm just getting ready for re registering and finalizing the registry really. And I wanna know the sex of the baby. So hopefully, soon, we will know the sex of this baby. Thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.